Hi, I'm Ellie, and today I'm going to explain to you what the Inroads Climate Action Simulation is. You may have heard about it. You may be wondering exactly what it is. Well, let me tell you. So it is a group role-playing game where global leaders from sectors across business, government, civil society gather together to negotiate a climate solution plan to limit global warming to less than two degrees. The kick, though, is that these global leaders are whatever audience you're working with. You have people playing whoever they are, and then you assign them to different groups. And you say, okay, you're gonna play a business leader coming from a fossil fuel company. You're playing a, an activist coming from a, a climate justice organization, whatever it may be. Um, and then the goal of the exercise is for people to then come up with a plan to address climate change. We use En-ROADS to check out what the result is, making sure that it's a uh, data-based and then um, negotiate across the different teams. It's a lot of fun. Um, and I'm excited to tell you all more about it. Um, the climate action simulation, so it fits within a, several different formats we have for En-ROADS. Um, in this training, we'll, we'll go through different, different pieces of it, but just today we're focusing on the climate action simulation. The way it works and the context, kind of the story and narrative that we set up for the En-ROADS climate action simulation is that the UN Secretary General has convened a global summit bringing together government leaders, business leaders, representatives of civil society from around the world to come up with a plan to address the climate crisis. Um, all of the groups will bring their different strengths, uh, lobby for their interests, but also try and work together to see what it could take um, if everyone were to propose different actions and, and find something that, that meets everyone's interest as best as possible. Um, the way it works is that your group, maybe it ranges in size from 12 people to well upwards of 300, uh, but I would say the ideal amount to work with for a climate action simulation is right in that 20 to 40 people range, uh, you know, an average uh, class size in a lot of places. So there are six groups that we typically use. You can add a few other different groups, and I'll talk about that in later videos. But the six main groups that we use with the climate action simulation are conventional energy. This is representing our fossil fuel interests, our coal, oil, and gas companies. Uh, then there's a group representing clean tech. This is our solar and wind industry, wind industries. Um, also other renewable energy retailers and manufacturers out there. Then there's a group representing our land, agriculture, and forestry interest. Another group representing industry and commerce. These would be our car manufacturers, our big retailers, selling consumer goods, that kind of thing. Uh, then a group representing the world's governments. And another group representing our civil society interests, our climate justice hawks. Um, and together, they all will negotiate and propose different, different actions uh, that we test within En-ROADS to see what a global climate action plan could look like. Here's some pictures from uh, the past climate action simulations that we've had. It, we run it both online and in person. So what, with whatever audience you're working with, there are some different kinds of uh, approaches to facilitation that we'll get into more uh, to describe uh, how to best pull off one of these events successfully. Uh, here's an event where the the people participating dressed up in character, um, use props, use the Zoom backgrounds in this case. A lot of fun. Um, here's an example from a, a class of business students um, where they're playing their roles, negotiating in person. You can see the tables there set up with props uh, of refreshments and that kind of thing. Um, here's another group uh, at MIT playing the climate action simulation in the United States. Um, and, you know, another group rep playing, it, playing it online. So the top insights that are typically delivered through the climate action simulation are, one, it takes more than one solution to address climate change. Uh, said another way, it takes more than one seed to plant a garden. You've heard us mention this before. It shows up throughout all of the different ways in which you can use En-ROADS. Um, number two, uh, it shows what's possible. It shows how all the actions combined can create scenarios that uh, successfully address climate change. We've got to act with urgency, but there are still p potential pathways for us to follow uh, with global coordination. Um, number three, 
uh, one of the things that it, that is highlighted within the climate action simulation quite frequently is that we've got to do th actions that keep coal, oil, and gas in the ground. That's going to be really important. And for uh, we use the climate action simulation as a way to prompt discussion about the other kinds of near-term co-benefits that can come from acting on climate change. Having people highlight some of their um, interests, you know, maybe it's a, it's a group, uh, someone from the climate hawks representing health interests, uh, calling out the, the gains in air quality that we can make if we limit fossil fuels. Things like that can come up and enrich the discussion, uh, both during the simulation and afterwards during the debrief. And here, uh, just to wrap up, let me give you a quick overview of the in agenda for a typical climate action simulation. The event itself uh, generally runs two to three hours. Again, there's flexibility. It could go much longer. It could be split into two different sessions. There's flexibility here. Um, and as you become more familiar with the way to structure it, uh, I think you'll have some ideas for, uh, for your own uh, uses of the climate action simulation. So the way the agenda lays out typically, uh, one, you start with an introduction. Hi, hello, who are you? Uh, give people their briefing statements that describe the roles that they're going to play. Um, and then it begins when somebody playing the UN Secretary General um, gives their opening speech and then gives people, you know, time to understand the roles that they're playing. Uh, and then groups break out into their specific groups that they're playing and then discuss their strategy, come up with their plans and proposals uh, for what kinds of action they might wanna take. Then uh, typically groups will nominate one person who then gives a speech to the entire group. It says, I wanna propose that we take action in this way. Um, then after they make that proposal, the facilitator playing the secretary general or a science advisor or something like that will then test those results in inroads. Look at the results after all of the groups have made their proposals. Um, and then a second negotiation round begins. At this point, groups may want to talk to each other, lobby for different positions. Um, and that's where you can sometimes see a lot of the action and, and the activity level really picks up and becomes exciting. Um, then following that, more speeches and more testing of the proposals that the groups have come up with in inroads. And then we conclude with a debrief in which uh, that's a time to for everyone to get out of their roles and then reflect on the experience and really solidify the, 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 the things that the insights that have come up along the way and make sure people um, paid attention and noticed them. Um, but yeah, a lot of fun and I'm excited to share more details with the climate action simulation uh, in following videos.